Hello, everybody, that's here. We are happy to see and hear all of you on the other side of the screen. I would like to make another five minutes quick tutorial for those who would like to have just a refresh on how to install Waterblock and Active Backplate on Asus 4090. I have a two version. Strix will be basically very similar. So first you will do remove original fans and bracket from the card itself. I have a separate video about that. You do some preliminary cleaning. I use the Arctic Clean solution. Part one is just to dissolve all remaining thermal paste and any residual oil from thermal pads to clean your all parts where it was installed and then with the purifier you're removing whatever left from the part one so something like that there's a number of other products that are available and uh, after you do this let's put card aside you actually start working with the block itself it comes it, it's, it has two parts which will be installed on both part of PCB it comes assembled for the purpose of safer shipping so the first part you start you need to actually separate them and for that you remove those uh, few screws that hold them together also there's uh, additional screws behind this plate there's three screws that also hold block together after you remove that you um, will remove something inside which I'll show you separately after I do that so let me to do work really quick and I will come back in a few seconds here you go we have three screws those from the front and those five from the top this allows us to separate block in two parts but that's, that's not all of it we have this carton thingy that uh, is also protecting from accidental scratches so we'll need to remove that as well and then we'll see what's under it if you in the process you unscrew the post that sits under you make sure that you will tighten them up because it's important that they properly installed so this one i probably will just show you quickly because it's not too long and this is a good example when post get unscrewed together with the stop part and I can't, I can't even do it with my hand so I'll have to use some tools later so um, so here we go we have this uh, part uh, fully assembled we need to make sure that all post is, is screwed properly and uh, here you will see probably most likely number two etched in which is a version number two of the backplate part uh, which is more uh, they did some changes that it fits a large amount of variation of the block uh, of the GPU itself so if you have version 1 you follow instructions uh, for version 1 if you have a version 2 you ha follow instructions for version 2 it's only difference uh, where you put thermal plates on the backplate portion of it so after that essentially we will need to go back to the GPU itself and install thermal pods and also thermal paste pods provided with a block clearly marked this is one for water blocks that you need thermal paste provided as well you can use your own if you want to for the pods specifically EK wants you to use the pods because it's very precise type of assembly so if you have a pods which is uh, inconsistent with thickness or less compressible the block might not be installed properly if you use a pod that uh, highly compressible it's unlikely then you will run into any problems but that will be at your own risk um, i would probably use fuji poly i'm pretty sure it will be no issues whatsoever but for the sake of this installation we will continue with provided parts putting thermal parts probably the longest uh, one of the longest parts of block installation maybe with exception of disassembling 
original cooler. I find it always useful to print out manual with a map where the thermal pass goes and then you can very easily to put them in place. You can even count how many spots uh, you have and then count on a PCB and to make sure you didn't forget anything. Also I'd like to remind that the thermal pass has a protection film on both sides to prevent contamination, also thermal pads are a little bit sticky, so nothing will stick in a transit, and it's important to remove this film. For example, I didn't remove anywhere except those four little pieces, and if I install like this, plastic will be act as a perfect insulator, and you will get terrible temperatures, and probably it will melt, so it's a big mess, so don't forget to make sure that thermal pads are free from the protective film. And uh, when it's done, I usually put thermal paste as a very last step to avoid contamination. And how it's done, I typically take some sort of box or something. I put my block onto that part and I flip the PCB and lower it to major screws. So that's how I do it. Which we will do in a second after I will clean thermal pads and put thermal paste on. And here we go. If you'd like to be absolutely anal, you can purify all contact surfaces and you continue with block installation. Excuse me, reflection. It will be go out in a second. This is all prepared GPU and uh, essentially you just need to lower it and uh, try to match all the screws in the best possible way. I usually give it a little bit of wiggle for perfect contact. And here we go. Elbow grease, putting all the screws according to the manual. All required screws in. Note that some positions not occupied for the initial block installation, the first block installation. Also, Everywhere the small screws except this corner that holds the bracket is a little bit longer because it's a nut on the other side and we have a three screws here from the original bracket which comes with the GPU itself, not with a block. So now we proceed with second part installation and that starts with those uh, standoffs that were removed earlier and that goes in those empty spaces that we didn't occupy and we have another set of thermal pads provided clearly marked thermal pads for backplate that will take you some time to cut and place in the right position and again great idea to print it out and just follow the map that is provided in the manual notice that unlike previous installation of thermal pads. Now we have a two different sizes and they clearly marked in the different colors. Hopefully you're not color blinded and can see that. Otherwise just read what the sickness means because it's also marked in the letters as well. Thermal pads in place, all film removed. Remind you second time. Also double check that those O-rings on the ports right there, they're not damaged no cuts or anything like this because if by any chance anything wrong with those it uh, could be a leak and we are basically oh actually you can remove light if you don't want it I don't want it and you install it Well, I was quite generous with thermal pads, so they're sticking out. I assume that uh, you maybe can do a better job with that if you want to. 
I assembling this for the test and I'm going to remove the block shortly after the test so it doesn't bother me. And let's finish it up with those screws and in the end we need to make sure that those screws can be put in place as well. Sometimes uh, from my previous experience if uh, assembly uneven or anything like this those screws might not align so you make sure that everything in a good order here so it's only one tricky part about assembling active backplate other than that it should be straightforward let's see how it goes my screws was slightly misaligned and simple solution you also loosen those three screws on other side and then those three screws goes in just perfectly. And that we have our block done. The only final step to pressure tested it before doing any further installation. Thank you for watching.